glory. We behold the glory of the Lord and are changed. Say, God, change me. And are changed into the same image or the image of Christ from glory unto glory. Who give the Lord a praise if you love him. Thank you, Lord. So let's just talk a little bit about this uh, glory. Second Peter, if you want to turn with me to Second Peter 1, beginning at verse 2, for those of you that have your Bibles, Second Peter 1, uh, beginning at verse 2. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Just say amen when you're there. Second Peter 1, verse 2. Yes, God. The Bible says this. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. How many knows God wants his grace and peace multiplied unto you? Amen. Be multiplied unto you. How? Through the knowledge of God, God wants us to know him and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He's given you all things that pertain unto life and godliness. The word of God is mostly preparation is about preparation and application. God's preparing you so he can apply unto you. God doesn't just uh, have you there and he's forgiving you of your sins to show up in church and say amen. Amen, amen. He wants you to make a difference in somebody else's life. Yes, amen. What he's done in your life. People come into our services and they think, well, they just came and they got a miracle or they got a healing or God saved them. And that's it. Just show up every Sunday from now on and say amen. No, just as God has changed you through us or somebody else touching your life and then putting it into your life. God now wants to use you to change somebody else's life. Yes. As well as uh, we lay hands on you and pray for you and God heals you and God does miracles in your life. Uh, then I want you to know that God wants to use you to bring miracles and healing into somebody else's life. Come on, somebody praise him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's okay. Don't pay attention to those that are, are bringing in some stuff. They'll be in here with us, uh, with us shortly. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Ken, as soon as you guys are down, come on in here and join us. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody raise your hands and praise us. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. He's called us according as his divine power has given us to all things. He's preparing you so he can apply to you. Preparation for application. He's got an application for you. Yes. There's something he's wanting to do with you. Amen. Oh my God. Yeah. He's right. wanting to show you the impossible so you can show others about Amen. the impossibles Amen. of God. What Amen. God can do. All Amen. things are possible with yes. God, the Bible says. Right. And all things are possible to them that what? Believe. To them that believe. How many believe? Amen. You got to believe to an extent or you wouldn't be here today. Look at somebody and tell them you're a believer. He has given us all things. So he's preparing you so he can apply you to do something. Oh, but you know, I'm just so crippled up. And, and I just can't get around much and I just stay at my apartment and, and do hardly nothing at the complex because I feel so bad. Then maybe God has called you and he's preparing you for an application at your apartment building. Yes, amen. Maybe he wants to use you to touch the neighbor. Yes, amen. Maybe he's wanting you to bring some of his glory that he wants you to experience. He's wanting you to take some of that glory and share it with somebody. Anybody 
anybody ever been out the store shopping or doing something and uh, and you just got this feeling when you left? Oh, I just maybe I forgot something at the store. Yeah. yeah, maybe you forgot to pray for five people. <laughs> Maybe the reason you kept seeing that person, is, are they following me? Yeah. yeah, maybe they're following the glory of the Lord and they don't just don't realize what it is. Yeah. There's something on you that's drawing them. Yeah. See, when Jesus went from one place to another, what drew the crowds was the glory that was on him. Even the demon possessed will come in the path of Jesus. Why? Because down deep inside, even that individual wanted deliverance from the demons that was in them. Oh yes. my God, somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. He has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. Talking to us, to the saints, he's given these things to through the knowledge of him that has called us. Look at somebody and say, believe it or not, he's called you. Yes. He's called us to what? Yes. To glory? To glorious places. Woo. Yes. You can't get to glorious places without getting through the valleys and the deserts before you get to the glorious places. Oh, God, why am I going through this? Because God's got you on your way to your next glory. Woo, somebody raise your hands and praise him. God said to tell you today, whether you realize it or not, he said to tell you that you are atmosphere changers. Look at somebody and tell them you're an atmosphere changer. God wants you to know the power that you have to change the atmosphere. 99% of the time when there's bad weather coming, all I have to do is go outside and tell it to go somewhere else. And it goes somewhere else. Because I'm an atmosphere changer. I can walk into somebody's life and they can be so down, almost really, really, will, really, willfully ready to take their own life. And all I got to do is sit down and start to talk to them. And all of a sudden, 15 minutes later, their countenance is beginning to change. The appearance on their face is beginning to change. All of a sudden, they're not talking anymore. Like, I got to give up on everything. Before you know it, they're starting to preach to me a little bit and encourage me. You want to know why? Because I'm an atmosphere changer. Woo! You don't wait. See, a lot of Christians wait to determine what's going to happen according to their atmosphere around. Ooh, you're quiet now. I must be preaching to somebody. I didn't get very many amen. Ooh, I guess the bottom's going to fall out of everything. Why? They said they're getting ready to lay everybody off. Thank God. God's got a better paying job for you. He's just pushing you out the door so you can get it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, the atmosphere can't dictate to you how it is. You've got to dictate to the atmosphere how it is. The devil don't tell you what's what. Oh, some of you he might. The devil shouldn't tell you what's what. You tell the devil what's what. Ooh, your fleshly circumstances are only a demand for the heavenly to come in and show you who has the last say so. Oh my God, somebody praise him. Your eight dollar an hour job with 30 or 40 hours a week, if you trust God, might end up end you up with just 10 hours a week or 20 hours somewhere making 20 or 30 dollars an hour. You gotta know that God is going to change your atmosphere. Yes, amen. You gotta know, woo, Lord. 
and see about atmosphere changers. Let me, I'm, I'm going to have to take up on this next week because this is just going to be too long. Then she won't say five more hours. But anyways, uh, atmosphere changers. You see, too many people allow what the atmosphere is saying around them to say what, what, what the, uh, uh, the facts are. But we've got to learn that what the atmosphere around us is for is to challenge us to come forth and do the impossible because God says all things are possible to them that believe. Me and my wife has been right in the square middle several times of tornadoes hidden down ready to pick us up and toss us away. And sometimes I've been right there in the middle of my sleep in times past in our motor home up, up on top of a mountain somewhere and we was rocking and rolling and she's sitting up saying oh my god and all of a sudden her look over and hell hell you gotta get up pray there's a tornado and I just sit up and say a little prayer and lay down and go to sleep and here it goes and it's gone <laughs> hallelujah see you gotta be atmosphere changers the weather don't dictate to us how it is. We dictate to the weather, dictate to the weather how it is. And that's when you need to be fine tuned and in tune with God, so you know. Well, when I rebuke this storm, first of all, is God riding on the wings of this storm? Is God directing this storm? Am I coming against God, or am I? Do I have the ability right now by what he has given me to be an atmosphere changer and tell that thing to go the other way? Yes. Woo, Lord, somebody yes. praise him. Yes. And you got to remember, you can't be an atmosphere changer in somebody else's life if you haven't changed your own atmosphere. Well, come on now. You can't go telling God about how God's going to provide you. You know he's going to give you greater finances, blah, blah, blah. If you can't believe God that he's changing the atmosphere for you because you know God's going to bless you and he's going to move. And regardless of how it looks, we all say, oh, me. We all say, oh, God, what, what are you going to do now? That's just normal flesh. But deep down inside, we're dictating to the circumstances where maybe I didn't have enough faith then why did you pray you had enough faith that's why you pray who's gonna pray if they don't believe god's gonna answer my god somebody say it. oh god maybe i needed to have more faith no you need to rebuke your unbelief right now you had faith when you when you prayed it's what's coming against you now that might grab you my god somebody say it. amen you can't change somebody else's atmosphere. You haven't changed yours. If you're sitting around, woe is me, all week long in the house, letting the circumstances dictate to you, somebody with victory, oh, woe is me, I, just, I ain't been out of the house all week. I'm talking to somebody here who's got the victory. Somebody's got the power over the devil, and you can't have power over a couple of your muscles. I got power over the devil. You can't even get power out of your own butt to get up and come to church regularly like you should. I got power to cast the devil out of, out of my neighbor. Why haven't you cast the devil out of you first? Come on, somebody. God has given you the power to change the atmosphere. Hear me. Even God's people can make a decision to stay in the wrong atmosphere. The children of Israel, even after God said, I'm free from Egypt. There came several times in their life when all of a sudden they murmured and they were complaining, maybe we should go back to Egypt. When God brings you out of Egypt, don't let Egypt back in your life. Amen. Yes. That's right. Even Egypt was provision to a degree for the children of Israel. But that provision also had bondage. Ties and constraints. They were always burdened down. Woo, 
Oh my God, somebody praise him. See, we're, we're wanting to believe God for change, but we don't want to do nothing for it. When God brings change in your life, you got to pick up, sometimes pack your bags, pack your suitcase, and say, devil, I'm out the door, and I'm leaving Egypt behind. Amen. Yeah. Whoops, whoops, somebody yeah. praise the Lord. God don't want no Pharaoh in your life. Dictating over you, telling you what's what. My Lord, somebody praise him. Even when God deals with a husband and wife, and even though the wife is supposed to submit unto the husband, it's talking about submitting unto a godly husband. Not that says they know God, but really know God and is living a godly life. My God, somebody praise him. You can't change your neighbor's home unless you've changed the atmosphere in your home. And us as leaders, and I'm preaching to me and my wife first, us as leaders, we can't change the atmosphere in somebody else's home if we've got all kinds of strife and division that's constantly in our home, there's a difference in the, in the devil coming against you and fighting and you being the devil fighting each other. You can't change the atmosphere in your neighbor's home if you haven't changed it in your own home. And leaders, you can't change the atmosphere in other people's homes if, if you haven't changed the atmosphere in your home. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And you can't change the atmosphere in a city. Pastors, you can't change the atmosphere in a city if you can't change the atmosphere in your own spiritual house. Woo, somebody raise your hands and praise them. There's something wrong if, if, if when everybody gets all excited, and thank God you're excited to see me in faith. But you should be just as excited to see David Mary. And all of you should be just as excited. Woo! The atmosphere isn't just changed because we're here. The atmosphere, your atmosphere is changed. When you come into the atmosphere of Brother Dave and Sister Mary, because they're also atmosphere changers. They don't let the devil or things around hold them down and stop them from doing what has to be done. They do what has to be done. Those are real atmosphere changers. Woo, somebody raise your hands and praise him. Don't wait until I get into town and receive the anointed microphone to all of a sudden get anointed to sing or perform or play an instrument. My God, when I'm not here, that mic's been touched by me. You're walking into the glory when you walk into this house. Woo, somebody raise your hands and praise him. Yes, God. Woo. Look at somebody and say, you're an atmosphere. Tell them again, you're an atmosphere changer. Hallelujah. I'm wondering, are you believing it yet? Tell the devil where to go. Tell him to go to hell. Ooh, he said it. Tell the devil to go straight to hell. Amen. Isn't that what yes. the Bible talks about, hell? Yes. He causes enough hell with causing, without causing hell in your life. Come on, somebody yes. say amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, in some of us, we might witness and we might go out some. But let me give you a real gold nugget. Before you think you're going to knock on the doors and change everybody's heart, you better make sure that you have spoken to the atmosphere in that neighborhood put first. Because not everybody or not the majority of people are going to be willing to hear what you have to say unless you've come against the ruling spirits and principalities in the atmosphere around that neighborhood. Amen. You ever been in a neighborhood and wondered why on your side of the street, everybody's nice. Amen. But as soon as you walk across the street, it's almost like you just walked into hell. <laughs> yes. 
because maybe on your side of the street there might be some more God-fearing people praying, rebuking the devil, trying to change the atmosphere. But over there, there might be the majority of them that's flat out serving the devil and is the devil. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You go from one church to another church. And you would think even where you find a whole lot more people that, whoo, my God, look at all these people. We're going to have a great time tonight. And you have the most bound up service and you say, my God, what happened? Yes. And the only way it's going to change if you're there in revival is because you got to be an atmosphere changer. you got to change their atmosphere to where they walk into your atmosphere so their lives begin to change. Yes. There's a lot of Christians that just need change all over again. Some of us, we, we need to get saved every day. That's changing your atmosphere. Or somebody raise your hands and praise it. From one glory to another. Now let me tell you, how many knows what glory land is? How many knows you hear all, especially all the old saints, because they're stuck in just what they're, they're, they're in their own box with what glory is. So most of the, even most of our generation, but generations back to them, when you talk about uh, 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 getting into the glory of our, oh yeah, one day I'm going to make it over there. <laughs> oh, when I get to glory land one day. We even got the songs of Beulah land and glory land and, and, and we talk about when we get over there one day in this glory. I got news for you. God's got glory for you right here. We know glory land is a place, but let me tell you something. The glory land still isn't over there. The glory land is when we come back with the Lord and his kingdom is set up here on this earth for a thousand years. We're going to be reigning in glory. By God, somebody say But before then, for God to deliver you, let me prove this to you. Look at somebody tell them, glory right now for you. The Bible says, for we are transformed, we're changed from glory to glory. You're delivered from one glory to another glory. Now, come on. Why on earth, once we get over there, would we have to be delivered from anything? Why would you have to be transformed in anything once you're over there? The transformation has already taken place. God's talking about we're being transformed or changed from glory to glory. You're be, being delivered out of one glory. You've been into a greater glory right here on this earth. This is where the deliverances come from. My God, somebody say amen. All right. I'm starting to lose some of you. I think we're going to be here next week and end the next weekend. We're not positive about that, but pretty sure we're going to be. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap if you love him. Ooh, how many of those soap operas in the house? Don't you lie. You know Amen. Amen. You just can't wait to turn it on tomorrow to the days of our lives. While the world turns. With the young and the restless. In Santa Barbara. They're all in the days of our lives. So if you love soap operas, well, we'll have a soap opera message, message continuation on next week. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ooh, look, at, look at your neighbor again and tell him we're, we're what? Atmosphere changers. You walk into somebody's home, change that atmosphere if it isn't right. Hallelujah. Yes. When I'm in the devil's house, change that devil's house atmosphere. Yes. Come on, the devil's house was your house at one time. Yes. Did you believe God to change it? Do you believe God put people in your life to change your atmosphere? Yes. Amen. And then there's some of them people, you know, no matter what you do to try to change their lives, after a while and they're not going to accept it, you begin to cast your pearls before the, the swan. Yes. Either a person wants their atmosphere changed, 
See, there are people that are bound demonically and spiritual wise where we can get those demons out and deal with their atmosphere and bring change. But then there's some people that have the knowledge of a little bit of truth, but they're determined in their mind they're not going to change. Yes. Yes. Those kind of people, you got to turn over to God's hands when you try to deal with them. Amen. Because they're not going to let you change yes. their atmosphere. Hallelujah. Ooh, somebody Amen. praise it. Yes. But people around where they're demonically inspired because their atmosphere. Let me tell you, you walk yourself into the wrong atmosphere and stay there. And I'm telling you, if you're not there specifically and you're changing the atmosphere, that atmosphere is going to change you. Is that that right? Somebody yes. say amen. Yes. Hallelujah. You know it's true. Some of you, if you walked up and somebody walked up to you on the street and called you a name, you'd be ready to kick their hind in right there. <laughs> their atmosphere just changed your atmosphere. If you're not careful. No, you better dictate to that thing and change their atmosphere. Ah, with the power of the love of God in your life. Thank you, Jesus. Stay to your feet with me today. Yes, God. Isn't he wonderful?